back in 2010, Britain was still reeling from the Great Recession. We couldn't carry on simply spending money, but we were determined to do our best to protect the frontline services that hardworking people rely on. With less money, as well as uh, with an aging population and rising public expectations, we had to do more for less. From day one, we started work to transform the Cabinet Office into a proper operation centre, building teams of officials who could effectively scrutinise spend in departments. The new Efficiency and Reform Group had the power to stop spend in certain areas through tough controls which cut across Whitehall. Back in 2010, some departments were paying up to 10 times more than others for simple things like printer paper. IT systems were not compatible with one another. Prime expensive property was woefully underused. I wouldn't claim, as I say, that we had everything planned out from the start, and it's only earlier this year that I teased out the five themes that have, in reality, underpinned our reforms. And the first theme, which underpins all of it, actually, is openness, because transparency builds trust, it sharpens accountability, and it drives uh, improvement. Taxpayers can see how their money is being spent. People can judge how services perform because the outcomes are measured and published. The second theme is tight control from the centre over common areas of spend. There's simply no good reason why different departments should be paying different prices for the same goods and services, simply no reason why departments should be allowed to refuse to share buildings. Treasury and Cabinet Office need to work ever more closely together as the government's corporate centre. But that tight control from the centre over the common areas of spend should be matched by much looser control over frontline delivery. And this is the third theme. So we are shifting power away from the centre and diversifying the range of providers of public services. Public service professionals should be set free to do their jobs in the way that they know best. And that's why we support mutuals and joint ventures to spin out of the public sector and we want to be doing more business with SMEs and with the voluntary sector and social enterprises. The fourth theme is digital, because as well as being cheaper, services delivered online can be faster, simpler, and more convenient for the public. Gov.uk, the new single domain for government information and services, has revolutionized our online presence, winning a coveted design award along the way. Fifth, the fifth theme, there has to be a properly innovative culture so that public servants have permission to try sensible new ideas. And we are still some way from this. This is the most difficult change to achieve. We need to learn from the uh, fail fast motto of Silicon Valley, fail small, fail fast, or from Israel's startup nation. Our program of civil service reform is all about supporting a faster and less bureaucratic system focused on outcomes, not processes. But changing culture is tough. It's tough to do. It's a serious challenge. Civil servants need to be supported to try sensible new ideas, even if they don't work, and many of them won't work. For the whole period from 1997 to 2010, the ONS has told us that public sector productivity remains static, even though in the private services sector, it had risen by nearly 30%. Now, I don't believe that that damning statistic is an indictment of the quality of our public servants, nor, though it's tempting, do what I lay it all at the blame of the previous government. Uh, I believe we have some of the very best public servants in the world. What it does reveal, to borrow Lord Hennessy's apt phrase, is that too often the civil service and the public service generally is somehow less than the sum of its parts. Systems, processes, rules, top-down control all hold people back, and that has to change. The demands on public services are going to grow. People are living ever longer. But their expectations of the quality and the accessibility of services are growing as well. Never again will the state be able to stand still. Technology has changed everything. When you can shop online at midnight and bank from your smartphone, the public expect government to be able to operate 
in the same transparent and responsive way. Over the next five years, we've said that the government will have to look objectively at whether it is best placed to deliver services in-house. We'll need to open up the public sector in areas ranging from operational delivery to back office services. The alternative may not always be and often won't be conventional outsourcing as it was in the past. Instead, we're supporting alternative delivery models. The old binary choice between services delivered in-house by monolithic public sector monopolies and, uh, on the other hand, red-blooded commercial privatization or outsourcing has gone forever. Our work over the past four years has demonstrated that structural change can drive down the cost and improve the quality of public services. We're already tracking over 100 public service mutuals across England, and there are many more in the pipeline. The results are dramatic. Waste and costs are down, while staff satisfaction is up. Staff absenteeism, a really good proxy for morale and productivity, is falling. Professionals are in the driving seat. Well, we've only just scratched the surface of what can be achieved. The achievements so far have to be a foundation for greater reform in the years to come. We've proved the model, and now we need to roll it out on a larger scale. Over the next five years, government will have to work hand-in-hand with staff groups and public service leaders across the public sector to ensure that they have access to the right expertise and can share best practice. And every mutual is a new company, say, mostly choosing to be not-for-profit, and yet they are all businesses. Uh, paying tax and providing jobs, um, but they, those that are not-for-profit then invest their surpluses in delivering even better quality services. And it's an extraordinarily powerful combination. Entrepreneurial leadership, a motivated and liberated and empowered workforce, commercial rigor, uh, combined with the public service ethos. It's extraordinarily powerful. But as we set free public service professionals, we also need to complete our work to transform the heart of government into a real corporate center. This year, the Prime Minister appointed the first ever Chief Executive of the Civil Service, charged with a mandate to accelerate and oversee our efficiency and reform program. Cross-departmental leaders covering commercial and procurement digital, human resources, property, major projects and communications report in to the chief executive. This gives him the ability through these teams to build talent in these functional fields inside departments, including through overseeing recruitment and managing careers. A different picture of Whitehall is emerging. It's one where the day-to-day running of frontline services is pushed as far away from the centre as possible, putting real power and responsibility in the hands of public servants. The centre of government will be a far more unified and integrated operation. Back office services will be shared between departments. More policy will be developed outside of Whitehall, and pooled policy teams will work to several secretaries of state. There's a lot of hard work coming over these next few months and years, but more importantly, a lot of hard thinking. We will need to reimagine the role of the state in providing public services. It will mean doing more, doing it differently, doing it better, and doing it for less. And it will never end. There will, this will always be a work in progress. There never can be a steady state. There has to be continuous progress. The public, for whom public services exist, deserve nothing less.